Hi guys, in this lesson I'm gonna talk about Phrygian chords, how you can play them and what you can play over them. So the first thing we should talk about is what is a Phrygian chord. A Phrygian chord is a dominant with a suspended fourth and a flat nine. Um, at least that's what it is in jazz. There are probably um, somewhat uh, other interpretations of what it might be in other genres, but in jazz you will come across it as being a suspended dominant with a flat nine, like I'm playing here. Um, it's a very nice chord to use as an intro or uh, even as a substitute for, um, well, for a dominant obviously, but also sometimes as a substitute for um, for the tonic at the end of a song uh, to start a new chorus. So there are various things you can do with it and it's, uh, it's a nice surprising sound, especially in major, because it's, it's sounding minor and it's a little bit ambiguous sounding. Um, so you don't really know what's going to follow. For instance, uh, I'm playing this uh, A uh, sus flat 9 and if I resolve that to D major, then the contrast is quite big. So, it works well for those kind of things. Um, I use it quite often for intros, uh, among other things. So, um, let's just look at a few ways to actually play this chord. So, in uh, example one, uh, the first chord is this. Which I think is the most typical of the Phrygian dominant sounding uh, voicings. The one you'll probably use the most. Um, it is in fact a B flat major 7 flat 5 over an A. Uh, which is also one of the ways that you sometimes see uh, that uh, people notate this chord. But um, to me, most of the time they actually work as a sort of dominant. Uh, so notating it uh, with a B flat root it's going to make it confusing to understand what the chord is actually doing there. Um, so that's one. Uh, another way to play the same kind of thing would be to play this, which is uh, a G minor triad over an A, and you can of course do this too. So we have the B flat as a kind of voicing and this is sort of G minor and G minor derived voicings. Uh, another way to look at it is to look at it as being an E half diminished over an A. Uh, so that might give you a voicing like this one. Or this. Or even this one. Or if you take the G minor into a G minor 7 voicing you could use something like this. So that's how you play voicings like that. Um, in terms of scales, um, well, I mean, the Phrygian is the mode that's found on the third degree of a major scale. So the obvious choice for scale, in this case for this A uh, Phrygian chord, um, would be an F major scale. So that would be this. Um, another option which um, is used, but I'm not really going to use it too much in, uh, in this lesson, is to say, well, um, I actually want to have like a natural 13 on my A sus chord, which is sort of a G minor melodic sound over an A. And then you would get this scale. But that's sort of another chapter, so I'm not really going to go into it. Um, an, uh, another option that uh, is available is to play uh, harmonic minor, so play um, D harmonic minor on top of it. 
But um, to me, when I'm using this chord by itself and not resolving to to, uh, to a normal dominant, then this is kind of working against me because that's the resolution that I don't actually want to hear. That's the one that I'm leaving out. So if I have that in the scale, then sometimes I'm going to be playing stuff that's going to sound like I'm doing, which is exactly what I don't want. So, I mean, it, it will work, but uh, personally I don't use it that much. Uh, no, actually, I never use it on this kind of chord. So now we have a few um, ways to play the chord, so we, you can hear like what, what it sounds like. Um, and we've uh, put a scale to it, or two in fact. And uh, now the next thing we can do is to uh, find some uh, melodic uh, devices that we can put into use when we're making lines on it, because I think f most of us don't really have immediately um, a, so a sound assigned to a uh, uh, SOS4 flat 9 chord. So um, what you could do when you're trying to get um, get that sound is to use this uh, pedal and then uh, add some other uh, other arpeggios and other devices to it to um, to get the right sound. So uh, my examples are sort of grouped. I'm going to give three examples and they're just different arpeggios that I use when I'm making lines over this uh, type of chord. So the first device that uh, you can use is the same one that I'm using in this uh, chord voicing because you can use uh, B flat major 7 flat 5 arpeggio to make lines. Uh, there's an easy way to uh, play that arpeggio that is uh, symmetrical every uh, set of two strings. So uh, you can play it like this. And the line I made with it um, sounds like this. And well, essentially, it's just. Sort of a melodic uh, phrase just using the notes from the arpeggio in this octave and then going down to rest on the fifth of the chord. So another device you can use is to uh, look at the chord as being an um, E half diminished over A. So you can use an E half diminished arpeggio. So that would be this arpeggio. Um, and that can sound like this. And uh, yeah, well, so actually I'm just playing the arpeggio and then I'm running up to, skipping up to this uh, A and from there I'm making a small melody using a D sus uh, triad. That's pretty much it. So the third example is using the G minor triad, uh, which is the same of course as this voicing. Um, and a G minor triad that would be something like uh, like this. Um, and a line you might make with that would be something like this. Uh, Basically, I'm just running up the, the triad again, landing on the on the root of the chord, and then skipping up using uh, a landing on the D. So this was four. So that was um, three examples of uh, how I might uh, use different things to make uh, lines when I'm improvising on a course like this. Um, probably when you practice this, like use the use a pedal point like this, and then then just try and play the chords first. And then try and improvise with it. Take one um, a picture at a time and see what kind of lines you can make. You can make, um, and try and listen for uh, how it works uh, in, in that context. Because of course you probably know these are pictures, but then in another context, so you kind of need to get used to hearing them 
uh, over this uh, this route. Uh, of course, I chose the key of uh, D minor, so uh, to have an A uh, an A Phrygian chord, uh, because then I have the open string simply just for. that sound sort of readily uh, available um, all the time and make it easy to play. Uh, in any case I hope that uh, you can use the stuff that uh, I uh, presented here and make your own lines with it and uh, get used to using these chords if you don't already. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. If you want to um, subscribe to my channel then please do. You will stay up to date. I make lessons pretty much every week. Uh, you can also go to my website and uh, subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, and on my website you can also download a PDF of the examples with the chord voicings and uh, the lines that I make and, uh, for, for this lesson. Um, if you like the lesson then um, you can also like it on YouTube of course. And if you have any comments or suggestions for uh, other lessons or other topics then uh, you can let me know here in the video or you can uh, connect with me on uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Google Plus and let me know there. It's always nice to get some feedback and uh, to get some suggestions for lessons. Um, this lesson is uh, one that came out of a suggestion from uh, somebody who saw one of my other videos. So, um, until next week, thank you for watching.